Hey, we're here at Metadyne filming the instruction video for the HCOG who did not receive instruction booklet with their order. We're going to start with something similar to what you might see get it coming out of your box. We have the two different versions here. Currently this is set up to accept the rifle version and we also have the undermount version that will show you how to attach if you've ordered both kits. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take apart the trigger assembly which is two bolts. There's a 632 screw here. And a quarter 20 in the back. This is how the unit looks once it's stripped down from the barrel and the fitting. There are three screws that are not something that you should touch. They're not for maintenance. This being one of them, and here's the other two. They're all the same screw. It's a 1032 set screw that is wrapped in Teflon. After a while, you may notice that there's going to be some small leaks developing because the Teflon tape will eventually deteriorate. You can take those out, put a strip of Teflon tape on it, and reinstall them, and that's all you should ever have to do to those. This slot right here is the safety valve that if the regulator fails, this acts much like a burst disc. And so the O-ring itself will pop and the air will bleed out from here, which is underneath the trigger guard, so it's completely safe and everything's, everything's meant so that uh, nothing will ever affect you. The regulator itself is housed in here. This screw slot is the regulator knob. As it sits, it's fully in all the way tight. That is the maximum pressure you will receive in your unit, which is rated in between 280 and 300 PSI, depending on temperature and uh, the CO2 conditions or if you use compressed air. To adjust it for a lower pressure, you simply back it out. When the slot is flush with the unit here, that's roughly 200 PSI. A couple more turns out and you'll go down to its lowest working pressure, which is right around 160. Now the only way to accurately do this is to install a pressure gauge like I did on my unit here, which is a simple thing to do. Um, just make sure you don't damage any of the internals when you do that. This here is for our purposes only. Don't mess with this either. This unit can come apart here. This will show you the internal piston, or the main piston, which you'll see a couple O-rings here, and then there's one inside this spring. All of the O-rings on the unit, after a 20-hour period of use, which that's going to give you a ton of lifetime if you do it on a regular basis, you want to coat with Vaseline, just 100% uh, pure Vaseline with no additives, and this will keep your O-rings in great working condition. If you needed to unscrew this whole thing, which you can screw from the back. This is a very tough thing to get off. If you needed to get this piston out and you just want to play around with your unit, when you take off this screw, this screw has been Loctited in. So make sure that you uh, have some Loctite when you reinstall it because this is a very critical screw. You don't want that to come loose and the Loctite will prevent that. Go in ahead with the regulator piston to make sure that we can apply the Vaseline on it, you just keep backing out this screw. Of course, never do, never back this all the way out when it's under pressure because this will shoot off. Well, actually, it might not, but you don't want that to happen. So here's your regulator adjustment knob, the regulator spring, and to get out the regulator piston, just use an Allen wrench, push it out. And here is the piston. This is an amazing piece of equipment here. This is all it is. This is a uh, product that we are patenting. So for all those companies who like to copy us, you know who you are. You can't copy this one. Same thing. Put some Vaseline on these O-rings here and just reinstall it. Same way that you took it apart. Make sure that's all the way seated. Make sure the spring's in the cavity.
and screw in. When you're adjusting the regulator, if you're going from a lower pressure to a higher pressure, it will immediately pressurize the chamber. If you're going from a high pressure to low pressure, you need to fire a couple rounds and then it will readjust. This unit is designed so that if it is under pressure, you will not be able to physically remove this as the, the unit actually expands somewhat. So, earlier we showed you how to take off the trigger housing for the rifle to put the one for the undermount on. It's the same process. You basically have the same screw here, which is the 632. You have the quarter 20 here. And once you do those, I won't show you that right now because I think you get the picture but you have your clamping system for the top. The screw hole goes here and here, you tighten that down and you're good to go. For the adjustable stock that comes with the rifle kit, you want to attach it to the trigger housing assembly here. We provide you with a 1032 screw that you just put right there, tighten that up, and that'll keep this from ever twisting or causing you any rattling problems. For the adjustment, we have two set screws here and here and also here and here. That way you can adjust both the shoulder plate and the extension arm to whatever suits you for your best playing position. You can reinstall this the same way it came off and you're ready to go. For those of you who ordered the rifle kit, this is what it should look like when you're done, minus the pressure gauge. I highly recommend going ahead and installing that, but if you have any questions regarding this, please give us a call or email us. The ASA feature with the micro line should look like this. This is a different grip. Uh, this is any AR-15 grip will work. Put it together. You're ready to go.